My little brother right here. What's your name? Byron. Mike. Byron. Byron. What's going on, Byron? What's your nationality, Byron? Oh. You don't know. We're gonna teach you. We're gonna teach you. What does Christ look like, Byron? What? Christ is a black man. All praises to the Most High, man. All praises to the Most High. How do you know that Jesus Christ is a black man? Because the picture that we're showing you, right? But before we came out here, what picture did you see on TV? White. A white man. This image right here is what put our people in slavery 400 years ago. That's right. And it's time to repent from that. That's why we're out here. Because image is everything. Image is the root of your imagination. You ever had anybody tell you you got a good imagination? Tell me some things that you imagine. I want to be a police. You want to be a police officer? Okay. Look over there behind you. Like a police officer typically drive those cars, right? And ride those bikes. If you never saw one of those cars or bikes, do you think you would have wanted to be, be a police officer? Right, because you never saw it. In the same way, if you never saw a true image of what Christ is supposed to look like, according to the Bible, you would never know when you look in the mirror that you're one of God's sons too. And that's what we're out here for. We're out here for you. We're out here for you. So I want you to understand some things about your true heritage. So Jesus Christ was a what? He was a black man. According to the Bible, black men are called Israelites. You with me, Byron? So if, uh, if you're a black man, that means you're a what? An Israelite, right. And if you're a black man, you're not only an Israelite, but you come from the tribe of Judah. So that's one thing I want you to remember, that you're not black anymore, Byron. What are you? You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You follow me? All right, give me uh, Hebrews chapter seven, verse 14. Because I, I want you to understand something. You and Christ have something very special in common. Jesus Christ was the greatest man that ever walked the planet. And y'all two have something very special in common. I want you to read this. The book of Hebrews chapter seven and verse 14. Uh -huh. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Did you hear that, Byron? Our Lord sprang out of Judah. And where did Byron spring out of? Judah. You also come from the tribe of Judah. So you and Christ have something in common. And guess what that also proves? This man right here is a lie. If Christ is black and he comes from the tribe of Judah, and you're black and you come from the tribe of Judah, hey Byron, scoot up for me a little bit. I don't, I don't want you to be too close to them cars. Yeah, just come, come sit right here a little closer to the side. We're only gonna be out here for another 10 minutes or so. If Christ is black and he comes from the tribe of Judah, turn it down, I don't want it to yell at him. Check, 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 right. If Christ is black and he comes from the tribe of Judah and you're black and you come from the tribe of Judah, who is this guy? Is he the truth or is he a lie? He's a liar. He's the biggest liar to, that, the, that the earth has ever seen. And you know what we're gonna do to this liar? We're gonna make him pay one day. Me and you, me and you, Byron. We're gonna, we're gonna make him pay. You're gonna have a big house one day. It's gonna be bigger than this whole apartment complex. And we're gonna make him take out all the trash. That's right. You ever had to take trash out? You ain't gonna take trash out no more, Byron. He gonna take out all the trash for you. You ever had to clean the bathroom? Now, what's, what's some chores you gotta do around the house? You gotta wash the dishes? You ain't gonna wash dishes no more, Byron. You know who gonna do it? That guy right there. What else you do? What else you gotta do around the house? Sweep the floor. You know what, Byron? You ain't never gonna sweep a floor no more. You know who gonna do it? That guy right there. You know why? Because he lied to you and he got to pay for his sins. Let's go to Isaiah 14, just real quick, man. That's right. Just real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna show you that he got to pay for his sins. All these nations that deceived you, Byron, you know, so it's a guy that owns the store right here. You know what we're not supposed to be doing? We're not supposed to be buying stuff from that store on Saturdays. But since he tricked you into buying on a Saturday, you know what he gotta do? He gotta pay for that. All right, give me the start of uh, verse one. 
the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. The Bible says that the Lord, this guy right here, Byron, he's going to have mercy on Jacob. You know who Jacob is, Byron? Jacob is you. Jacob is me. Jacob is everybody on that sign right there. The Lord is going to have mercy on us. Read. And will yet choose Israel. And no matter what we've done in this earth, as long as we repent, we will still be chosen when Christ returns. Read. And set them in their own land. Byron, this is not our land. If nobody ever told you, we came to this land 400 years ago on ships, on cargo ships. The cargo that those ships were supposed to carry, they didn't carry. But guess what? When, when this man comes back, you know where we're headed? We're going back home. That's right. Right? And you're going to come with us. If you repent and keep God's commandments. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. You know who the strangers are? This guy's a stranger. Anybody ever taught you stranger danger? Don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to these guys. You don't want to talk to them. Because this is, this is what's going to happen to those strangers. Read. And they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. These people... The people that own that store, the people that taught you all the lies in school, you know what they're going to do? We're gonna, they're going to cleave to us. Everything that they need. What are some things you need, Byron? You need food, right? So when these other people, when these strangers need food, you know who they're going to come to? They're going to come to you. They need clothes, right? When they need to get their clothes, you know who they're going to come to? They're going to come to you. Read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to put them back in their rightful place one day, Byron. But we need you, Byron. We really need you. We need you to repent and turn back to God's laws. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them and the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Byron, this man has oppressed us here in America for 400 years. That's right. But when our Savior, Jesus the Christ, returns, there will be no more sorrow for you, Byron. You won't be living in the projects anymore. That's right. Are your father and mother married? You won't be in a split household anymore. It's going to be all love when Christ returns. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And then we're going we're gonna to go ahead and wrap it up for Matthew 26. The reason I want you to see these, matter of fact, Deuteronomy 10, then Deuteronomy 6. And then we'll wrap it up. So Byron, now you know that, that Christ is what? Black. He's not white, right? And the white man, this guy right here is a what? A lie. That guy is a lie. Right? And you know something special about your nationality now. You're not black anymore. You're a what? Israelite from the tribe of of Judah. All praises to the Most High. Now, as you grow older and mature, how old are you, Byron? 11? All right. So as you grow older and mature, this is what I want to resonate with your spirit. You're going to get older one day, and you're going to be like, I remember those Israelites. They taught me something special when I was young. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel. Now who? Israel. When the Bible, when you read the Bible for yourself and you see the word Israel, now you know it's talking about you, Byron. Read. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of you, Byron? But to fear the Lord uh -huh. thy God, to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So Byron, the Lord, your God, commanded you laws, statutes, and commandments so that you could properly love him and serve him with all your heart and all your soul. So these are the things that you're going to need to do as you grow and become older. So while you're young right now, uh, well, shit, give, me a, give, me, give me Exodus 20. Give him the... Uh, Honor father and mother. While you're still young, but even when you get older, you always want to honor your parents. All right? So when your father tells you to do something, you know what I want you to do? Do it. When your mother tells you to do something, you know what I want you to do? Do it. 
Don't give them a whole bunch of lip. Don't be going back and forth with them. Don't disrespect them. They brought you into this earth. And you got to say all praises to the most high that God gave you an opportunity to come into this earth and wake up his people. He gave you an opportunity to repent and keep his commandments. You follow that? All right, read that. This is what the Bible says about your father and your mother. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. God promises that your days will be long on this earth if you honor your father and mother. You know what happens out here a lot of times, Byron? Our young brothers and sisters don't honor their parents. You ever, you ever known of anybody young to die out here? You never heard of anybody getting shot? A lot of times things like that happen. Their days are shortened on this earth because they didn't honor their parents. So Byron, I don't want you to be one of those children, okay? I want you to do what your parents tell you to do, unless they tell you to do something wicked, like go rob somebody. Don't go rob anybody. Don't go steal nothing from nobody. You follow me? All right, Deuteronomy 6. Um, we can hit that too. Oh, you want 6 or something? Start at verse 1, and then jump down to 7. Yes, sir. Now, why are we out here teaching this young man like this? Because the Bible commands us to teach the children. And although this is not my child in the flesh, it is in the spirit. That's right. And the Bible tells us it's an honorable thing for us to, to, to take a young man and, and deal with him like a son. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. The lifeline of an Israelite is keeping the commandments. And that's what we all must return back to. Give me verse 7. Verse, se verse 7. And thou shalt teach them di diligently unto thy children. Unto thy who? Children. We must teach the commandments to our children. We got many of our people talk about they do Christmas. You ever celebrated Christmas? God don't want you to celebrate that. That's right. You ever celebrated a birthday? God doesn't want you to celebrate that. The Bible tells us that God wants us, me, this brother, these brothers, your father and your mother to teach you his commandments. But you know what days God commands us to, to celebrate? The Sabbath day. The Feast of Pentecost. The Day of Atonement. Feast of Tabernacles. Those are the days you're supposed to be celebrating, not Thanksgiving, not Christmas, not Easter. You're not supposed to be celebrating those days. That's why the Bible tells us to teach you co commandments as a child, read. Right? And shall talk of and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. Right now you're walking by the way. People are walking by the way. That's why we are here to teach the children when y'all walking by the way, read. Right? And when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Meaning they will just be a part of our everyday action with our hands and in our mind between our eyes. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, then Matthew chapter 26. Byron, has anybody ever taught you that you are great? Yeah, who taught you you were great? Your teacher? All right, well, we're your new teachers now. That's right. You know what makes you great? You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Hey, Big Jerry! Yes, sir? That's the way you talk to your son! <laughs>
hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.